Hi everyone. How you doing? Hope you're having a nice day. Walt, honey, can you come up? I want to talk to you. I want to have a word with you. Hey, Rose, how are you? I'm good. If somebody good tells hear. you that you're not in a safe space, please take their advice. What does that mean? That means that you were not in a good place. So you say, I'm, I'm not welcome? What are you saying? You're welcome here. You're welcome here. I'm talking about in the room you were in earlier. So you heard about that, huh? I was there. You were? I was. It was It was a little bit rough. It was difficult. Not the first time, but the second time when someone was saying you need to leave. That it and wasn't I safe. I did leave. If somebody comes in, there are people in there that have not your best interest at heart. I saw that. They do not believe that a difference in political ideology is different than human rights. They believe that if you vote Republican or that if you are a conservative, that you do not believe in human rights. And thus, they will treat you like they believe you see them. Do you understand? I 100% understand. I went in there and I was talking to Mike because Mike is a good guy. I like him. Mike and is a good guy. Him. There's a lot of people in that room that are good people. Those are not the people that I'm concerned about. And I'm not going to come on here and saying, name Mark. names. Huh? I'm not going to name names either. But the point is, I went in to say, Mike, we agree. I didn't say that's we right. Agree like but I, Mike with, is with Mike growth. is more than willing to bring you up and platform you and have a discussion because, like me, like you, we believe in productive discussions and having a difference of opinion. But not everybody in Mike's circle, in my circle, believe that is the case. And, 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 and I, I'm I was telling you, enough, I jumped down when they started getting really hostile because I have been banned four times in the last two weeks. It's not just, I mean, they, I cannot judge them for how they feel. And I don't they want They have to. gone through, they have gone through generational trauma. And that their feelings are valid. But my concern that. is my concern is that somebody would disingenuously welcome you when they know after they welcome you, they're welcoming you to be cruel. Did you fall out of the box? Why did you kick me out? I didn't. You kicked me out. No, I didn't. It came up on the screen. It was an app. It said, that was it was the app. I did it, it you wouldn't be back up here if I kicked you out, goofball. Oh, I know I'm Why would I off. kick you out and then bring you back up here? It I doesn't make know. any sense. Right. You're right. 
So what I'm saying is, is there, there is a toxic environment on this app. And I don't know if you see it in its hypocrisy. So when somebody tells you that you're not in a safe space, I want you to listen, okay? All right, well. It was unfortunate. Like, you and I agree on almost all points. We disagree on a few points, and those figures said it. But they don't see it that way. They see it, other people, other minorities see it, because you vote Republican, that you are voting against their human rights. And therefore, they don't care what you say on an app, what you believe in, what you don't believe in. The fact that you vote against their best interests on the ballot box is good enough for them to flay you here. Okay? That's the thing. Now, see, me and Mike, we will sit here and have a conversation with you because we know politics is more complicated than that. We know it's more than just talking about one or two issues and and voting one side or the other. Not everybody is that nuanced. And a lot of people have generational trauma that keep them from looking at it in a more nuanced point of view. And and we can't judge that. That is their reality. And we have to respect that because that's where they come from. Mike and I get along good. Him and I understand. We see me, eye but, to eye. But you and I do. Walt, Walt, me and you and Mike come from an older generation that came together in unity after MLK was assassinated. Right? We were born during the unification of the different races, right? Everybody, or at least we tried, right? That was during the time when when Civil Rights Act was passed and everybody really wanted to try to create a, um, a, um, a future where everybody had equality. And we have made a lot of steps in that direction. It's just not enough yet, okay? And so we still have people that have had massive, massive suffering and continue to suffer today. And because of that generational trauma, because we still have grandparents and great grandparents who still share stories of their trauma over the years and over time, we have to give them that grace, allow them to share their stories and their pain. And if they feel that that they need to share their pain, allow them that. I share no ill will to somebody who does not want to share space with us because they're they're coming from a place of pain. But at the same time, what I have a problem with is somebody saying, we welcome you to come in and speak and then flay you when you get up on, on, on the stage. That's what m- my problem is. is. Is that echo? Is that echo? Coming from me or coming from you? I don't know. Hey, guys. It's gone now. It's all all bad. Hey, Hey, Ty. Hi. Mm, Tonight's just been not good. You know what's been going on. (laughs) Are you all right? Yeah. It's, It's been lively, hasn't it? It's just, I'm trying to process everything. Like, I got everything kind of organized, you know? But I'm just trying to process I got some good news, guys. What? That looks good, Rose. What? You got new teeth? Did, did, did no they more do gaps. the, um, the um, oh, screw-in type? Well, how would they do? 
No more gaps, baby. At least not professionally. I mean, I might wear it. I might run around the house with without a plate in, but it, when I go out for interviews and go for jobs, at least I don't look like uneducated. If you feel good, that's what's important. If it feels good, that's good. It's not, it's, and it's not about what anyone yet used to say about my appearance. It was about how I felt. Exactly. Because when you look at the plate, there's only like, there's like four different spots where there's teeth. It's not like even all the teeth together. <laughs> Looks like a fucking jigsaw puzzle. Are you able to but, chew with it? Take it out to chew. Um, I, I just got it today. So if you listen closely, I still have a little bit of a lisp. I'm learning to talk with it. And so um, well, when I good. eat like a meal, huh? You sound good. Thank you. Uh, so um, I'm still learning to um, talk with it, and I I've, I need to take it out when I eat a full meal. But when like when I eat like a little bite or two of something, I can I can eat that. It's just I got to get used to it. I'm gonna get used to it though, because my husband he got his dentures like 18 years ago, and he still takes them out to eat. I'm like, what are you doing? Isn't that why you got them? Oh my god. He's like, no. huh? I know. I'm like, I gotta stop drinking like pop because I like looked up like how bad that is for your teeth. And I was like, oh my God. I'm like, well, my stepson had so many health problems and they told him because of his um diabetes and everything that um uh, and his teeth being so bad that that's what really hurt the rest of his health. With his teeth being so bad. Yeah, because it's like, it is true. Like your teeth, if your teeth aren't healthy, it can affect your other like things going on. Like your um, what is it? Like your blood and different things like that. I read it before. Oh look, the trolls have finally got their invitation to come in and be trashy. Oh my Isn't that God. lovely? We just not pay attention to them. I don't know. Oh no! I, oh, this one girl. I come from she... the house of petty. We play with our trolls. Rose, we play you... with our food. Rose, did you see that girl I sent you? Like, why is she stalking me? She goes, "Oh, because I went into a different live." And she goes, "Oh, she goes you." And she goes, "Don't fucking tell me what's up because you you're friends with Rose and everything." And I'm like, "Okay, like, are you stalking me?" And she oh, goes, is that that profile you shared with me? Mm-hmm. Who is that? I don't know. I followed him. Let's see what happens. I don't even know. No, no, no. That ain't the profile. Not that person. I'm talking about the one you I sent you. In Discord? Yeah, in Discord. Yeah, I followed him. <laughs> I looked him up. I said, let me follow this person. I mean, I didn't... Because that's the person that I was asking about before. Yeah, because I'm... And like, I couldn't think of the name. I'm wondering how they even came, but I've never seen them in here unless they came on, like, another account. Because, because... these these people that, that um, enjoy trying to hurt people online, they have, like, ten troll accounts. I have a list of people that I have a list of accounts similar to mine on there that um, that actually that you could actually look them up. But the one night I actually spent time not on my phone because some of them have me blocked, but on my laptop without logging in. I went in on TikTok and actually looked them up and there's like 20 or 30 of them. If you would have told me that that Andrew kid was that stupid and he was that, like, lost, I wouldn't even argue with him last night. I didn't know that he was that freaking lost. Because, see, the topic went from one thing to another. When you came in, before that, we were talking about demonology and spirituality. So I had to school this dude. Oh, no, dude is way out there, man. He believes in the whole um, Ukraine uh, conspiracy theory stuff with... Who? With the... Uh, 
Oh he my. believes that the um that the uh what is it not the um he cr- believes in the crypto c- conspiracy theory um theory what the hell is that i don't even know if i heard of that there there's a um there's a <clears throat> conspiracy theory that um that we sent money to ukraine through cryptocurrency so that they could launder it and send it back to us and and give democrats money or some shit like that the us government never sends anything oh my in cryptocurrency God. nothing never ever they don't work in cryptocurrency. Now, if you want to find some black ops horse shit or somebody that doesn't work for the government or does some side shit, that's different. But the U.S. government does not function in cryptocurrency. It never has. So the idea that we're going to actually come up with boogeyman theories and decide that the U.S. government is now trying to launder boogeyman money to cryptocurrency <laughs> is, is like, okay, go ahead. And Mary That's had a little exactly lamb. It... Her fleece was quite love- lovely as snow. <laughs> and and she sat on a muffet with little tuffet. Okay. I mean, I like I didn't even know what he was talking about last night. He said he's seeing rock. Oh no, that that guy goes way off on a on a tangent. I think he he I likes don't... Russia. He likes Russia more than our president. I mean, there's a whole bunch of basket case things going on there that, and I was okay to deal with some of it because the guy actually has a brain. Rose, and you so can't I really wanted. I was just drinking something. I almost spit it out when he said he's a basket case. Oh my god, I was laughing so hard. But I mean, I mean, I'm okay to talk to anybody with any kind of theory as long as it's not a theory that I believe is going to hurt people. But then last night. When he was in, or the other night when he came in there and he said that he thought that he would be a better parent to BIPOC kids than black parents. That's yeah, crazy. That was kind of freaky out, crazy nut job kind of stuff. And I was like, I need to share this with some of my BIPOC friends and activists. And then after that happened, they all came in and was like, oh, no. Oh, no. Why told me about but, that? She told me, like, she goes, because I said, do you know who Andrew is? Because I went into his live yesterday and, like, he wasn't even talking. Like, it was just me, this other dude that is a biologist. He doesn't even know what the hell he's talking yeah, about. Yeah, I and you know what? As soon as the BIPOC community knew what he was saying, that's good enough for me. Yeah, That's why, my job, to tell everybody his, what's going on, what he's saying, yeah. because he wouldn't listen to me. I was trying to tell him he was off the mark. So um, to me, it's my job to tell other white people you ain't right. Mm. And if you're not listening to me, um, I'm going to pull the alarm bell. He should have. And as far as that goes, that's it. I'm done. I I, I pulled the alarm bell. I told society what's going on. And then I'm going to step back and watch. Well, I couldn't even. I couldn't even believe that he said, well, you should deny like history because of things we didn't. So like, we're, we don't even know what's true. So like he was saying like, like whatever, like, let's say for example, slavery. So like, let's say there was slaves that wrote actual uh, diary entries. We should just well, I deny asked him, that. I asked him, you're, I said, you're going to tell me that we should mm-hmm. change the word slavery to involuntary relocation. Oh, well, we don't know. We, I mean, he's just at say, saying all this supposition, and I'm like, dude, you're you're in Canada. You don't know American history. Exactly. We have been that telling too. BIPOC folks. We have been telling BIPOC folks that they don't get to talk about history. We've been telling them that they don't get to speak for for centuries. We are not going to sit here and have this conversation over TikTok and and try to devalue people. This is not going to happen. I'm not going to say, I, and that's when I unfollowed him. I said, I will not even have anything to do with you over that shit. I said, and then I was there for, I was well, there listening I, to him for a while. If I knew he was that crazy, I wouldn't even have engaged with him at that level because I didn't realize he was that lost. Like, he's really lost. Like, <laughs> I, don't I mean, and then that wasn't even talking about the indigenous issues <clears throat> because you're talking about a whole nother thing between Canada and the United States with indigenous issues. That was we were just talking about devaluing all the suffering through slavery that people went through. I'm like, dude, you cannot sit here and deny history 
Oh, well, we don't know what's true history. Dude, you need to shut up. Trust me, Joe. I don't know. He was. He, he, he sat there and said, he actually sat there and said that diaries passed down and written through generations in families, in, in black families that have passed that down so that they can tell their family stories because people that look like me have been tossing it to the wayside and burying it. He tried to tell me that we don't know that that's actual history. Have you lost your ever-loving stinking mind? <laughs> oh, I got, do you know I got reported on that live. Now I can't even go live on my main account till next Monday because I used the R word again on accident. Uh, didn't I tell you that night? I said, watch that yeah. word. No, I know. I, I just wasn't thinking and I didn't. And that's what you happened. know what though that that's what I try to tell people. There are so many things that are ingrained in our society that we say that's out of pocket, yeah. and it's like we don't even oh, no, think like, about I it know, because I know there's things that I say that are wrong. Like I have to retrain my brain to like, you know what I mean? It's like we're gonna say things that we don't realize are wrong sometimes. It's like you have to. And, um, retrain your brain to think differently like because like what i said i wasn't offending a community i was just saying it out of a thing that i was taught like you know what i mean and that's how like, i used to say it i think i fought that just recently until a couple years ago and i have an autistic son and i have like seven, yeah. seven diagnoses <laughs> and i'm like i can say it i can say it because i come from that community. no even if I'm from oh, that community, yeah, I shouldn't even if, say it, right? Yeah, you and and it. so, yeah. So you know, even even if I come from there, even if I have mental issues, I still shouldn't use the R word, even if it's something that I grew up with. Even just like I shouldn't say the F word, talking about the LGBTQ community, because it was something we tossed around when we were children, and we didn't realize that it was a harmful word. It hurt people, and it's a slur. And and so now I won't let anybody say that word in front of me. I won't let, you know, and, and I try to be very, uh, what happened? What happened to Cy? Where'd he go? He, he's still here. He's in the room. I'm telling you what, these people. I just re-invited him. He must have fell out of the box. I got to get a guardrail for my boxes. Is this the same? No. Buttons. Hmm? You gotta be careful with your buttons. You pushed the button, kicked them out. I didn't hit a button. The same thing happened to you, happened to him. The lab just bopped him out. It doesn't sound right, though. He was I just in the reinvited of him. I know, but it just, I, I re invited him. I sent him an invitation. He might need to re, uh, reload oh, his app or something. So, I mean, he, I could invite him. I feel when I find a room like this where I can find a couple of people I can talk to without hostility that I can get along with. Like I said, I Walt, we, Walt, you yeah. can't take it personal. You can't take it personal. You have to understand the source it comes from. A lot of people go through I, trauma. I, A lot of people have been through trauma. And when we have folks that are very conservative and talk about nostalgia or things that they want to go to to the past, those who have suffered in the past look at that as something that's that's harmful. I we have to acknowledge that that's valid. I'm trying to say is we agree on almost everything. I know, but some people can't see that because they're just seeing how you vote. You don't understand, Walt, well, until how, how I got I to know you. I felt that not, way, too. It's not up in just what you vote for. You're voting for the same thing. It's just different people. You vote for... They obviously stand up and do different things. My people you know, Walt, that I don't feel that way, that I feel the things. two parties are very different. 
They're not that far apart. The press makes you it sound know that, that way. I mean, that is a that is a place of disagreement between us. That I believe that the, yes. the the Republican Party is very far removed from a party of the people. That is something that we don't agree on. And you have to understand that most of the people that you talk to that are on the Democratic side or the left side, they feel the same as I do. That the people that vote for Republicans don't care about humanity. That's how they see it. It's not a talking point on your TV. People truly see it that way. I know we have to that understand. It's not true, true, but the press says this is how it is. It's not the fact. But I understand your point of view is the press told you I'm a bad guy. You and no, I know. No, it's not about you the press. It's not about the press. You, you're not listening to me, Walt, and this is why people get upset. I understand why you can't hear me because you've heard the same thing through your life for 60 years. It's going to be hard for me to dig through that and get you to understand. But I come through I it with understand. a different way. I understand that you hear my words and you know that I come to you in a sincere manner and I try to talk to you as one human to another. And so you respect me and you respect my opinion, but you don't agree with me because I haven't been able to get you to see it from my point of view. Okay. Other people don't want to hear that. They've decided that it's been too long and they're not going to waste any more time trying to get somebody to agree with them. And so instead, they're going to turn around and ostracize you. And they're going to act like you don't care about them because that is easier for them than to look at somebody that is more conservative and that may have a different ideology that is also equivalent to giving human rights. Some people cannot see that. And, and we cannot blame them for not being able to see that. Just like I have many, many years of trauma in my life, a lot of people have generational trauma. Not just that they've gone through, but their parents have gone through, their grandparents have gone through. I tell people, go to an old folks home, go to a hospice, and go ask somebody if you can pay respects or bring flowers to an, a very old elderly black individual, an elderly black lady, just to bring her some flowers and say hello, somebody who's never met you before. Don't tell her that you're coming, just walk in. And watch the fear on her face to see a white stranger for the first time that she does not know. We have created a generational fear in people. That is our fault as a white people you know, throughout generations. These folks are actually, they're afraid just because they don't know who you are and the color of your skin. It doesn't matter if I didn't do it myself or Walt didn't do it himself. As an entire people, we have done this. We have to understand that. No, I don't have to feel guilty for what happened 200 years ago. But I have a responsibility as a U.S. citizen today to recognize that trauma and try to make sure that we move forward in a better way. That is my responsibility. I understand what you're saying. I have felt it. I have lived it. I had my guides on the job. They're working on a very difficult job. So they, we need you here because this is so hard. We don't know if we get this done. So I, my truck is a pretty truck. My name's on the side, my phone number, and it looks nice. I step out. I look good. I'm clean. I step out. The man looks at me immediately. He points at me, and he turns to his nephew. Do not trust this one. That was hurtful. Because he's an older black man. And understand, that's because other people that look like you 
other people that have nice things like you have created that distrust. Walt might be the nicest guy in the world, but because of other people that look like you or talk like you have been have created this distrust. Now we have a society problem. You see what I'm saying? It is hurtful. I but we have that. to take that hurt. We have to take that hurt that we feel and swallow it and accept it and say, that doesn't pertain to me because <clears throat> I am not that evil person. In fact, because I'm not that evil person, I'm going to understand that trauma is not for me. So I'm going to put that aside and, and go, oh, they're not talking about me. They're talking about someone that looks just like me. And, and, and is, so we exactly have to depersonalize it. His nephew, now I keep it in his 90s. His um, nephew was probably in his late 60s, early 70s. And so we walked around the corner to walk over to the sister where my guys were working. I mean, he said, I am sorry. I said, you don't need an apologist. I understand. It makes me feel bad. So you don't have to feel bad. So we walked over to the system. We could diagnose it for him and get it fixed up. So, of course, they're so happy they want to hug my neck. So that we And that was back great around. for you, Walt. I'm glad that you were <clears throat> such a good person that you were able to understand that. Understand that you being such a great person, a lot of people aren't. And they would have heard that comment and took that to be a mean, nasty thing, and they would have taken it to heart. And maybe they would have kind of lashed out. That's the kind of thing that people are afraid of. The, the man probably apologized to you for more than one reason. One reason is because maybe that comment was off the mark and it was not polite, which is true. He, he, the other he was reason... Truly embarrassed because... Well, it, it, right. He was embarrassed awesome. because it was off the mark, right? That's the one reason. But there was also another reason. <clears throat> he was afraid of the backlash. I've had to even correct my own family on certain things. Like I was because one time. You have to understand, and I know, I know, Ty. I know. I I want Walt to understand this, though. Okay, there is an underlying thing that we, me, that I didn't understand, that we see now in the newer generations that is coming up, and it's fear that has always been there. Always. The reason that they apologize very quickly, very abruptly, because there's a power dynamic that I hold because of who I am, that if I'm offended, I can go in and make a stink and I can actually get people fired. I can actually hurt people with my words, with the things I say, with things that I do. And so because of that, that people are real quick to apologize. Ma'am, I'm so sorry someone said that. I will make sure they don't say anything. And it's like, because I understand that, I can hear the subtle fear in their voice when they apologize to me. That is what we need to remember. That even though, yes, they are embarrassed if somebody does something embarrassing, when I apologize for my kid or for saying something I just apologize and let it go because I don't even think twice about it sorry man I didn't mean to say that you know other other people from unprotected parts of society from BIPOC communities LGBTQ communities they're really afraid of people in higher classes of society people that look like us of getting offended because in the past Getting a, getting us getting offended has really hurt them. And that's all I want us to remember, Walt. Yeah, like my really, um keep in mind. I live this every single day. There's twenty two percent this black I, in I, my town. I, I know, Walt. So I'm just saying black. that sometimes we don't see things in more than one light. I'm not blaming you. I'm not saying anything like that. I'm just trying to say that when we, when you were in Mike's room earlier, 
Mike is an awesome guy. And he comes from the I same generation so. that we do. Okay. Oh, Where Mike added he, me back. He, did he did he add you? Who me? Yeah, did Mike add you back? Oh, I don't know. I I was on I was on another account. Mm. I I was trying to give him some plausible deniability. Why is he adding me though? That was weird. Like I don't understand what the objective of was that because I blocked him. I think on the other account because I know you were having. Um, I don't that. know who that is, but this is a filter. Um, so my face, the makeup is a filter. Um, <clears throat> although I got my new teeth, so nobody can pick on me. Um, yeah, I don't know. I didn't know if you were cool with him or like what's been going on. I don't know. What motive, Mike? Yeah, or yeah. Yeah, um, me I've, and him. I've talked to Mike a few times. Here's the thing. I try to distance myself because Mike and me were friends. And then when everybody started complaining about me being a racist, they really took it out on Mike for being my yeah, friend. Yeah, I know. This said. Everybody's no taking it out on me, too. Like, everybody's, like, all pissed at me and, like, being your friend. And I'm like, well, I've never seen her do that, so I don't care. Like, until I see her do something like that, I've never seen that. And I really think that a lot of things are taken out of context. Mr. Yeah. Um, and, and the thing is, is that that's because their goal on here is to kick me off the app. So the reason... But that they're, they're upset at you they for want, talking to me. They want drama. Huh? Drama. It, it, it doesn't matter who they kick up. They just want drama. Yeah. I, I was in a yeah. live one time. So they, they were asking the, everybody in the room about you. And I refused to comment. So she's not here, so I'm not going to say a word. So it's kind of like, this guy's an idiot. Yes, I am. Because I will not ever talk about anybody. If she's in front of me, I, I'll talk to her, but I will not talk about anybody behind their back. And uh, so, uh, I guess I am. I don't. It's okay. No. Well, yeah, I don't it's take just like a, videos. It's like a hit job, right? I mean, it, it's like a hit job because they heard a couple things that they didn't like. And then all of a sudden from there, they they took it, twisted it, turned it out of context. And now everything, every single thing I say... And I've noticed it because I've gone into the, the these other lives and I've said something and right there in front of me, they'll take the, the sentence I said, twist it and turn it out of context and try to say it's something it's not. And I'm like, I've seen that. Oh, I'm like, oh, oh, all right. hello, troll. Yeah, How are I've you? had that done to nice, me too. Nice to meet you, troll. Uh, you could have introduced yourself so I wouldn't recognize you for who you are. That guy tried doing that with me last night. He was trying to twist my words. He was trying to make me sound like I'm insane. Like that I was comparing Christianity with Satanism. And I go, no, no, wait a second. Like he was, what he was doing was he, he was trying to not only insult me, he was trying to insult my intelligence. And then I gave him case studies I told him a, t a bunch here, of information. And, and here's my thing, Ty. Most of my opinions are not the opinions of everybody else. Right. I have very <laughs> original opinions on religion, on politics, and you don't get to change my opinion because you don't agree. Well, and I was and trying so, to keep my opinion out of things. Like, I knew he wanted scientific fact. So I was giving him scientific fact and I was giving him case studies that were um, in correlation with religion and science. And he didn't want to listen. He, he, what he wanted to do is his objective was to take me down, but he wasn't doing that. And I wouldn't let him. That's what it the was. The thing is with religion, you can't <clears throat> win a religious argument on fact. There's nothing on religion that, right. that is going to give you answers based on fact. Right. Religion is a faith argument. If you're not ready to stand on faith and stand on it firmly, then don't go in and argue on religion because people say prove that there's a God. That's not the point of religion. No, there's, that's there's no what I reason. tried to that's what I tried to tell him. I said these case studies are just showing 
correlation with things like one of the correlations I tried to explain to him and he, and I feel like he was trying to be condescending too, because he's sitting there and I was trying to tell him like the scientist's name and he was being like, he's like, okay, say it again. And can I get out a pen and a pencil to write it down like that? Like he th- was trying to be funny. And I said, okay. And then I, and then that would be my answer here. Let me help you. Here's how we did the teacher thing in Charlie Brown. <laughs> see that's what i should have did i should have played like back into him but i just can't do that i just did the tyler bluntman back at him (laughs) but um but yeah um so the faith thing uh here's one that'll kill kill them you you want to blow their argument about the faith thing all all out out to hell especially if they're pious in their faith because i'm i'm faithful but i'm not indoctrinated so right. you can give oh, me things man. that are true that don't go along with the bible and i still have my faith because my faith doesn't depend on the bible right okay That's it depends how. on the words of jesus christ so here's here's a tidbit for you the chinese are probably the oldest civilization on the planet. They have been around for thousands of years. Thousands. 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 There are no records in all the time the Chinese have been here of a worldwide flood that completely wiped out the entire planet. So what's up with Noah's Ark? If you go there, it's going to be kind of risky. Right. Get so, a, I mean, whole, when we when we want to talk about facts, right, if we're actually going to sit down and have a conversation about facts, we can do that. But let's not sit here and have some convoluted argument about twisting religion and facts and fast fact-based argument and and all that because you can't unless you have some type of doctrine in in religion or you've studied it for like decades or something like that just us here on an app having a discussion about religion you can't really take fact and and religion and mix the two and call that good because everybody's idea of religious fact is different well, yeah, that's what I, I was coming from the demonology perspective. I, he was coming at me because we were talking about demonology in specific in like witchcraft. So I said, I gave him the study on Sir Evan Edwards Pritchard. And I said, I studied the Azande tribe. And so did he. I studied that's a case study that was half the tribe was Christian, half the tribe was in uh, witchcraft. So I said in the half the tribe that was Christian prospered more than the half the tribe that did witchcraft that's a case study that doesn't prove that christianity exists but it gives it i guess light so i'm like you have to take from it what you want but i'm it's still a case study it's still scientific as he was saying that anthropology isn't a science like it's a soft thing is the, the thing is is that we can argue just about anything on religion right I mean, what was your, that just flew out of my head. What was that case study you were talking about? The one, um, it was from a cultural uh, anthropologist. So he studied like a tribe and half the tribe was Christian and half the tribe was, um, I, I, I'm pretty oh, sure. Yeah. For, yeah. Here's my question. Like, Did we know that there are actually Christians that practiced witchcraft? And so there are actually pagan Christians. Yeah. There are Christians that believe in Jesus Christ, but also <clears throat> believe that there are other gods. They just put Jesus above all others. Well, yeah, there's a difference between like, well, this witchcraft was like the evil, evil witchcraft, like, you know, like spells and stuff. There is a difference because there's like Wiccan, which is more like the how do you say like you know when you worship like the earth and like the trees and different like but, uh, i mean nature. we can we, i mean here's the thing though depending on what religion you follow and where you get your your deity faith from 
you can actually have a, an actual legitimate discussion about Christianity along with witchcraft. With witch, witchcraft is actually um, a practice of religion itself. Right. And the witchcraft is actually like, um, like if you practice voodoo, right? Or if you practice any religion. And right. you use any kind of thing or ritual in that religion, you could call that witchcraft. So, I mean, if you're going to sit here and say, you know, uh, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so, that's a spell. Right? You could, I mean, you could go down into it and you could put words into phrases and mix it up. Because indoctrination has told us that these words are bad or these words are wrong. And they're just words. They're just words that we put into different pages and different things to make di make up different ideas. And that's the problem with the Bible. The Bible has been translated from Hebrew and from all these different languages and been transposed. And then they put in chapters that they want because they want us to do certain things. And then they take out this certain part. They don't talk about Jesus from the time he was a, a, a young, from the time he was about 12, all the way until the time he was like in his 20s. What happened, bro? Uh -huh. Right? Right. So, I mean, now that doesn't mean that I don't believe Jesus was my savior any less. Right. So, I mean, that just means that well, why that, isn't that it in whole there? Thing with, right. With, with because I don't about. believe you're right. But I don't believe that if Jesus actually gave the, the directions to the folks that wrote the Bible, that he would deliberately leave that out for some inconspicuous reason. Well, that's what I was kind of trying to explain to him, like for. Like, with him, I was trying to explain, because he's, like, he was comparing, like, you know how some people, like, they do, like, rituals where they, like, I don't know, like, you know, where they will cut out the heart of, like, an animal or a person or something like that. That's, 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 that's different. They were, he was comparing that to how Jesus sacrificed his life. And I'm like, no, 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 wait a second. That's not even in the same realm. Like, what are you talking about? Like... He gave up his life for people. Unless but... you understand Christianity. Unless you understand the <clears> basis <throat> of the three Abrahamic faiths. You're not going to understand <clears throat> why Jesus was the sacrificial man <clears throat> that he was. Jesus. Commitment. Huh? Are you committed? If you are and you believe, then... I'll give you a picture. My, I was eight years old. He was six. We had to walk from my house downtown to our church because mom was taking care of babies all the time. We did this every Sunday. Our little suits on. We looked cute. We walked to church every Sunday. Sunday, church, and after that, after that, we walked back, and there was a little restaurant. We stopped in where, where waitresses there. And I went in, because I had a quarter during the week. I put a quarter on the table, and I told my neighbor, we both wanted and a tall glass of ice-cold milk, and we got it. It was years later. I found a, a quarter does not buy that. So sweet it was. She just thought we were wonderful. She just thought these kids are so. So she had to know in her mind later this little punk will realize how wonderful. And I do. I recognize you, Debbie. You are outstanding. Debbie, let me say your name a whole bunch of times. This is so this is why people become <laughs> teachers, though. This is why people become instructors and helpers and teachers and nurses, because when we interact with people and we grow up, we've realized what they gave us. We don't recognize it at the time. We recognize it later. It would be recognized. She did it out of the goodness of her heart. Not the thing is she'd ever for it. But yes, later I did discover I was her paper boy. I laid a moldy lawn. I trimmed the trees. I trimmed the bushes. I got a quarter of my quarters I gave to her. So, yeah. So now, these two little boys, 
walked home. You usually change their clothes because you don't take your Sunday clothes outside to play. Change your clothes, go outside. You... So now years go by. Now I kind of faded from that for other reasons. My brother, to this day, so dedicated to the church. Never say anything against the church. I mean, he is so stuck. I mean, oh my God, he's so to this day. Here and and here's my thing, Walt. I think that's great. The problem is the church does not reach outside itself. The church shows love inside the church to beat the band. When I used to go to my church, my church would do anything for me. They would bring me food. They would help me if they would help me pay my bills. They would do anything for me. How selfish is it of me to allow a group of people to help me like that when I know there are so many people out there that need help? And the only reason that I'm getting help is because of my faith. Jesus didn't want us to help somebody because of our because of who we believe in. He wanted us to help each other because of love. Because we love each other, because God That's told us to love each other. In the 1950s and 1960, the church, there was no government help. There was no, there was no safety net at all. The church, your neighbors, your family, that was it. And when you fell on a hard time, the church helped you. And of course, you helped the church. That's what it was all about. Somehow the government got involved in school. You I know, know what? don't like hearing me say that. Don't even say the government got involved with the church because we still don't tax churches. That about the tax. The fact the government said you, you, your donations really have. I know Obama said we don't want people to donate tax. Uh, to get the tax deduction for the donations. I don't know if that happened or not. I remember him talking about it. Man, I don't even know what the hell you're talking about. We don't want people to deduct their donations to a church. Nobody ever said that, that, did it? Yes, they did. No, uh, they didn't. I'm a highly regarded fan of Obama. So when you start cutting on Obama, you better bring some fucking receipts. (laughs) I want to know the day, the time, the speech that he said it. (laughs) I can't. I (laughs) I don't have the time stamp. And I don't mean to offend, but there was a time whether he put it through or not. I don't know. Well, he said, well, I don't give a, ru- a rubber baby buggy bumper whether or not he put it through. I want to know when he said that shit. And I, you're I, you're I either going to shut up about that. it or you're going to bring the proof. He said what? Okay, well, Confused. I guess we'll let this slide by. I don't have the actual facts. So. so if we don't have any facts about something negative about President Obama, then I'm going to call it fake news and we're going to drop it. What, I'm what sorry, was Russ. It? Wait, I did wait, not mean what, to offend what, you. What, what was it, though? I was just curious. Wait, what did you He's say? trying to say that Obama told us not to claim our tax deduction on church donations. Oh, okay. I don't know. I mean, I was young during the Obama era, so I don't really know a whole lot about that. And I was there kinda, was all kinds was, of trash talk about Obama, his whole presidency. <clears throat> They trash talked that man. That man did not have one major scandal his entire presidency. Not one affair, not one foobar, not nothing compared to the orange idiot that only had four years and embarrassed our country all that time. I will not Rose, sit Rose, here and listen to any trash easy. talk about Obama without some go proof. Easy. Go easy. I was not trash talking him. Uh, I did not mean to upset you, bro. Your feathers. It was, in fact, something. He was the idea whether it happened or not. I don't know. 
Yeah. A lot of There's people. a lot of things. There's, there, I, I admit that he deported a lot of fucking people. I'm not happy about that. But you know what? Truth, truth is truth. If there's something true about, about somebody, even if I like them, I come out and agree that something is true. But I don't, I just don't, unless we got receipts to show me some shit is some, something, I'm just not buying it. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I was guilted into voting for freaking uh, Mitt Romney in the second term, which I wish now I would have voted for Obama because Mitt Romney, though, is not as bad of a Republican as a lot of them because, like, he even spoke up against Trump. Wasn't Romney was an idiot, and it didn't matter anyway because Obama won. The only reason that Romney's got the balls to speak of is because he's got more money than God. He can say anything he wants. No, that's not the case. I will (laughs) say. Are you shitting me? Mitt Romney has an elevator for his car. That, That doesn't matter. That does not change your opinion or mine. You didn't like him. I didn't. The fact of the matter is, Obama won. What are I you mean, talking about? Taking the hell. What are we talking about? Uh, elevator, Matt. I, I mean, he I can have an elevator in his house. I mean, I wasn't really a fan of John McCain either. But McCain would have not. I think if McCain was president, he wouldn't have been too bad. But. He, there were certain things that I did not agree with him, but I was glad that he stuck up for Obama. His daughter's a little bit cuckoo, though. I will say that. She knows more about politics than any of these fuckers nowadays. She does, but then she... I don't know. Like She has really weird opinions on things. Like, I think I think as far as I'm concerned, you talk trash about my dad after he's a war hero and he's a vet and he's gone now. Oh hell no! I'm going to trash all y'all oh, motherfuckers. I, I agree with her on that. Yeah, I agree with her on that. Like that's bullshit. Like that was not okay. That was crazy. Like for him to talk like that about John McCain was really horrible. I will say that. What is this comment? Why did you take the help? What are we talking about? I have no clue. They're trolling or acting goofy. Well, I'm Anthony, trying to find what out. Do what... I don't I think know. It's that, I think it's that grizzly guy I got me because he keeps coming in on all different accounts. I'm looking at the thing and he keeps coming in on all these different goofy ass accounts. I don't know. Why does anybody take help when they need help because they're hungry? Oh, they want to pay their rent? Oh, that, yeah, see. I don't think it's Grizz, though, because out of one, out of all the things we argue about, that's not one of them. No, he's in here, I think, on a different account. I've seen some account with his no, face. I don't care. But this I, person, I don't care. I don't even know who the hell this person, Anthony Prish. They can record, Oh, my God, too, is please. that freaking, what's his name? Is that, like, oh, wait, this is Anthony. Is that that Andrew dude? Oh, my God, I hope not. <clears throat> I don't, yeah, why, I, don't worry about I don't know why. I don't know why they're so upset. Anymore. Like they're so. It says obsessed. more. It it says more about their low IQ than it says about me that they got to come in here on my live and say shit. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like if they're like, I feel like they're obsessed with you. Like I, if they didn't want to like associate with you, why are they in your live all the time saying all this goofy shit? <laughs> it's like what? they must like being on YouTube because when they troll me, I post it on YouTube. To show everybody what an idiot they are. Oh my god. So ridiculous. The last true night. There ain't no such thing, man. Women been taking up that frickin' mantle for a long ass time. <sighs> On no damn night. Yeah. Women that wait for the night end up getting hurt. Because he never shows the fuck up. That's true. I had to learn that the hard way. I wish mine came, but never did. That's all fairy tale bullshit. That's 
sorry. I mean, I love fairy tales. Don't get me wrong, but maybe not for me. I fucking hope not, because in this fucking world, I can't count on anybody but my damn self. And believe me, I don't want to. It's more stressful to worry about whether or not the son of a bitch is going to stab me in the back and whether I can take care of myself after I heal than to do it my damn self. Yeah, I am. And, men, and, and, the men, and, and the men running around this planet have only themselves for people to look at them like that and blame. Maybe not for me, and I teach my daughter not to trust the motherfucker either. Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe it is a little bit sad, but it is a survival skill that I had to learn the hard way. My kid did not. Yeah. It's kind of sad my that you can't. Daughters, my four daughters. I explained to each and every in graphic detail about guys. My oh, wife Ty, I forgot to tell not. you she got accepted to her first college today. Oh, wow. Congrats. Which one? MSU. She went, she's going to MSU? Is she going online? Or, or is she going to go in person? Uh, a lot of my uh, a lot of my cousins went to MSU. Well, see, her dad is from Michigan, and uh, I'm from PA, so he was born and raised in Michigan. So, um, so since he was born in Michigan, she can get homeschool there, or she can get like tuition uh, home base levels there in Michigan, and then. Um, I can, and she, or if she wants to go here in PA, she can do the same thing. Uh, and then she, uh, she was just awarded the presidential um, uh, scholarship for foreign affairs. Oh wow, that's good. I thought, I thought you had to go to the college in U.S. You say, huh? Is is the go to the college you were born? Where your parents are born. Really? I wish I'd known that. I had my daughter go to UNC in Greensboro here in North Carolina. Oh, what, what does Troll say? The last, the last true night, so you're bitter because you got burned by a piece of shit. No, baby cakes, I probably got burned by about 50 pieces of shit throughout my life. I just don't count them like that because they're not worth the time it takes to count. I don't count how high shit floats. So now I find out. Um, and by the way, I'm not a man hater because I have an awesome man in the other room. So there you go. <laughs> Wait. Well, t- what were you saying about your daughters? What did you tell your daughters about boys or whatever? Because I told her she had to go in state because I couldn't afford out of state. No, so no, no. I'm not talking about college. I'm talking about you were talking I, before we cut you off. You were talking about something like what you taught your daughters about, like being with a guy or something. Oh, but I told. I told my girls exactly what about how how worthless they are with their the the and so yeah, my wife was not happy with that discussion. She walked in her walk in the room and I was discussing this with my daughters. And in my little speech, my wife reached over, touched me on the shoulder and said yeah, I felt a little bit uncomfortable because I know she did not appreciate. The fact of the matter is, guys are all like that. That's what they think about. Mm, yeah. So, so I came out of the room. I walked upstairs to my bedroom, and I sat down to drink a coffee. So my wife came in. She said, <coughs> well, so I want to warn them. She said, warn them about being you. Exactly. I want to warn them about being like guys showing up being like 
So she pulled the blouse, the blouse over. She said, well, because of this, I said, yes, ma'am. Exactly. You just hypnotize me. You know what that does to a guy, right? She said, don't you think, I don't want them to know that. Because when a girl, the guys just hypnotize like, whatever you say, ma'am, I'm going to go along with it. I know that sounds stupid, but yes, it's true. You know what, though? We need to be honest with our kids and tell them what these situations entail. That's, that's what you're saying, Rose. I, and tell my girls what is it, the real story. My wife did the real story. Mm-hmm. The thing is, is that sometimes boys aren't memori- mesmerized. Sometimes they don't stop. Right? Sometimes they don't care what you say. Sometimes they don't respect you. Sometimes they don't get taught by their parents to have mutual respect for an individual. So whenever we teach our kids, we can't candy coat it and ram it up their ass like it's some sprinkled Sunday surprise. It can be a beautiful and wonderful thing. But it can also be a fucking nightmare. Sometimes in the last two weeks, and I've appealed a many times, but I know if I get banned again, they're probably going to cancel me permanently. So I could not say that conversation was. But yes, I explained to them what you need to do. The guy gets to that point. And some guys will get to that point. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of sad, like, that you can't trust somebody. What? Ty, I I feel saying human nature is really a pathetic thing. Yes, you are 100% right. I, I mean, it's just like... I don't know. I mean, I'm happy being single. No I'm happy being single because, I don't know, there's just too many immature guys out here, and I'm just not for it. I've I've tried to have relationships that just doesn't work out because of the ma- immaturity, so I'm happy being by myself for the time being. Which is a good thing to do. Mm-hmm. The early days when I was single, good God, it was a wonderful time. The fact, 37 years of marriage has been pretty good. Three years, good God, they were wonderful. <laughs> wonderful times. Well, I'll be acting like <laughs> he had these golden years, like the kids didn't drive you nuts, you didn't have to come home from work early, no pipes burst, there were no hard times. Well, I'll be acting like the last 50 years were golden flow. <laughs> no, he's saying when he was single, not when he was married. Oh, but even when he was single, like Walt was never home drunk, alone, puking in the toilet. <laughs> Walt was never eating Walt was never eating cereal out of a bowl for dinner. Come on, man. Oh my god. We don't live in no <laughs> Walt cracks me up like, like he's sitting here like, oh no, nothing wrong in Walt's world. <laughs> oh my god. Bro, my sing- my single days, I didn't have to eat a cereal for for dinner, I could call up any one of my girls back then, and I would have dinner. One, only one of my girls, one not women, not going out with any one of the ladies I used to go out with. They were my girls. <laughs> wait, <laughs> Walt, wait, 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 Walt, you were a player. It's like what? <laughs> <laughs> Walt the player. <laughs> one, one of my girls had met one of my old friends, and they had a discussion. Walt was I don't a know player. <laughs> She said, oh, you were a player. 
I don't know where the police from. Apparently, I was. <laughs> well, so you're having like eight girls. Like, <laughs> they like it. I like it. I did you ever live like Black Book, Walt? Walt, did they call you the Fonz back in the day? Oh, Black Book, like Blanche. No, no. I, <laughs> I was the Murph. The Murph. You, you were the Murph? Is like, that what you just said? This is the... There's a big sign hanging in out in the middle of town with my name. Too much. So when I saw a girl <laughs> and I introduced myself, she said, "Oh, you're one of them. I'm a Murphy." So, oh, yeah, okay, it went, it went a Murphy. Long way. All right. <laughs> so when people talk about privilege, not deny it. I got privilege because I was a guy, because my name was all over town. Oh, yes, it was fun. I did take advantage. Hey, you want to call me a scumbag? You can. It's okay. I don't mind. I enjoyed it. I did not well, intend. Why do you have to go so, from somebody who had a decent life to scumbag? Because like, I am. I mean... Were I'm, you hurting people? Were you like hurting people? I don't understand. Never. I never hurt anybody. Then why would you call yourself Everyone a scumbag? Was... I did. You did. You said scumbag. So I said, okay, I'll agree. I'm fun. Well, did I say that? Um, Ty, did I call you him did. that? No. Yes, you no. did. Ty, were you listening? So, what gone bag? I said, Yes, I am. I can't help it. No, Walt, you said that. You said you can call me a She never said you were a scumbag. You said uh, if you want to call me a scum, scumbag, then whatever. Because you were what you were talking about is how you were like with multiple women. So, you were basically saying, like, well, not women, I guess girls, whatever. So it was because you were with multiple girls. You, you well, were being, being very young, they were girls. I was a little boy. I don't see anything wrong with that. They liked it. I liked it. Nobody got hurt. Well, what? When did no, this? St- like, there's what no harm. Are, there's like, no injury. Like, what age are you talking about? I don't know, man. Walt's scaring me. Like high school? I don't no. know. <laughs> it was like, after Walt. high school during college years. During the college years. Oh, uh, okay. I mean, I can uh, see that. I guess that's your play player time, I guess, college years. I don't see how uh, yeah. anybody could fault me for that. They were playing, I was playing fun. Well, I think that maybe I don't know, Walt. I think you're walking yourself into a dead end here. I don't know. Nobody. Wait. I mean, like I. Well, how when did we're you find younger your wife, and we though? do a lot of silly things and stupid things, I mean. Even me admitting to saying things off point when I was in my 20s had people giving me the evil eye. Be careful what you say. Just saying. I guess I should, I should not have gone down the avenue. I'm, talking about the I'm not I saying that you daughter. can't be, I can't, I'm not saying that you can't be general. Oh, but I'm God. saying that I'm saying that we have to be careful how far we take things. For example, I shared that my children were both victims of SA before. People freaking bring that shit up on apps all the time. I was sharing that to help somebody else that was dealing with a similar story. Now people try to use that as a wedge to hurt me with it. So now I have to jump up and say, kids are off limits, motherfucker. So now I have to do that shit because I made myself vulnerable mentioning it. 
just like with the um, Ashley Babbitt thing, okay? You are not responsible for her behavior. But she was a relative of yours. All you have to do is say relatives are off limits. I can mourn a relative without agreeing with everything they do. That's it. Who is a relative of Ashley Babbitt? Hmm? Who is a relative of her? Well, it was Walt's niece. She was Walt's niece. Oh, okay. And so my thing is, that's it. That you're asking for respect and deference because a relative had passed. That's it. It doesn't have to be about what happened, how she ha- how she passed. It doesn't have to be about the politics. Walt had someone in his family pass. He's asking for respect in that manner. If people can't respect that, you can either block them or leave the room. That should not even be a, com- a contention of discussion. If you choose to bring it up during January 6th, then that it will be an open door that you have to deal with. But other than that, people should not use it against you. I didn't even know who that was. I just looked it up. I didn't know who that even was. It's the woman that got shot in January 6th. Oh my god, I'm sorry, Walt. I didn't even know that. And the point Thank is, you. it doesn't matter yeah. with we with, it doesn't matter whether we agree Sorry. with why she got unalived. It doesn't okay. matter if we agree with what happened on January 6th. It matters is that she was a relative of somebody here on this app, and we are in a room with them, and we are giving them respect because they are an individual, a human being, and they have right. feelings just like the rest exactly. of us. Exactly. Well, that's the thing. It doesn't matter Ty. your uh, if I, political... If I could say one thing... Go ahead. Yeah. Ty. Go ahead. You yeah. are the only person that to me. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Yeah, I don't. I told you before, Walt. I was sorry to hear that. Nobody likes to see a, a relative pass. No, that doesn't don't. matter what political affiliation you are. I just, I bad. just don't find it. I don't like people that are disingenuous. Right. So if somebody doesn't like you because you had a, a family member at January 6th, then block you and move on. Uh-huh. There's no need to drag a, a relative's name through the mud and try to make somebody feel bad because they had a relative that passed. You're being Im- they're being immature and being a child. We have long since grown up over this shit, and we don't need to treat people like they are less than a human being. Exactly. And then they get upset at me because I stand 10 toes down on that shit. I don't agree with violence. I don't agree with mistreating people. And I don't care if people like that or not. And and if they they have a problem with that, they can fuck you and the horse you rode in on. Have a nice day, motherfucker. Uh-huh. I I don't I don't care. You know, and I don't worry about being judged on being myself. If you feel the need to judge me, then I am not your cup of tea, baby doll. Get back on your tricycle and roll down the road. <laughs> These analogies you come I up agree. with are too damn good. <laughs> I agree so much, Rose. Hmm? Point we agree on. That's one big point we agree I know, hon. I just, you know, we have to start coming together and taking a stand against this viciousness because we still have to live together. We still live in the same country. Unless you, unless we're all ready to throw down on another civil war, there's no point in all this. There's none. I mean, it's kind of sad, but the I last, feel like that's what's going to happen last, soon. No, it's the not going to happen. Last two or three weeks, I've been going into different lives and talking to different people about how much we have in agreement. If yeah. we point out how much we agree, the disagreements are so small, let's not fight. And so many people I'm going to tell you what though, Walt, you need to go into the right side and talk to the right in their rooms too. Because I know that I you think that the left is very vicious, the right can be just as vicious. 
Oh, they are horrible. There's I no was doubt. In, I was in a live There's earlier no tonight, and I didn't know it was a right wing uh, room because the host didn't have any of that written on there. And I went in there, and they tore me up. And I'm like, "Woe is me! You can get, you can do all that and backtrack because we're what? What I am not going to sit there and let people do is use the word quote unquote insanity and try to say that's some kind of DSM five bullshit." I know what you're talking about. So, and then Belinda's going to come in there and talk all kind of cash shit when she can't even handle somebody calling her old and shit. Is she? Is she older? I've seen her. She's older, and what happened was she had a conniption fit because these people came in and, and started calling her old and saying all kinds of nasty things about her age. She cried. I'm not, I don't want to cut down on a woman. She was very upset about people saying things about her age and about her mom and about all kinds of stuff. She cried the blues about that. I mean, she like had a whole live about it and everything. And then she's she going to come in there and have words to say about me because I'm defending the mental health community over some barbaric bullshit, whether trying to say whether someone's sane or insane based on whether or not they can tell they're sane. What the fuck is wrong with you people? I heard him. I was going to say they moved on, but I was going to say that's not a mental disorder because... I studied the DSM-5, and it, that's not insanity. I mean, it's a symptom of a mental disorder. I mean, you could say it was a symptom of, like, schizophrenia, but you can't the say thing, it's a The thing disorder. is, though, Ty, everybody's understanding of their own mental health changes over time. Uh -huh. when, when, I went, when I became homeless in 2003, I didn't realize that that had a lot to do with me becoming homeless. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. And, and and it wasn't until after I got more therapy and I realized that that was part of the reason why I ran and left the, everything. And it was because in my mind, I just couldn't handle reality anymore. Wait, how old were you back then? Were you like younger? 36, 36. Okay. But I'm I was homeless before when I was 18. Huh? I'm curious about that. Wait, where, where, where uh -huh. were you sleeping at night? In my car. Okay. Uh, so you had some kind of shelter. But, That's good. Yeah. I mean, when I didn't have a car, we just slept in a tent, found a place to sleep, got money together, and got a hotel room, whatever. That's so, like, when I think about that, honestly, and I'm sorry to say, but there's some people in this world that are incredibly rich. And for them to well, not build homeless You shelters, know what, though, Ty? That's always the way it's been, right? That's I know, but new. it's just, I know it's always been that way, but it just boggles my mind. Because if I was a multi-millionaire or billionaire, I'd be building shelters for people and stuff like that. I can't understand how these people think the way that they do. I, I just, it boggles my mind. They come from that old bootstraps theory yeah. that, you know, pick yourself up by them bootstraps, boo-boo. All we got to do, get them bootstraps rolling, rolling, rolling. I mean, that's why I admire people that come out of, like, homelessness and stuff. Like, I look at, like... Um, Viola Davis, like, look at her. She came from like rat infested apartments as a child, and then now she's like an accomplished actress. Like, it's just crazy. Like, <sighs> I know. I just think nobody should be homeless with the amount of money that is in society. It's I just don't understand it. It's ridiculous. It's crazy. You're absolutely right. You have systems in place so every single person it sounds sooner or later I'm gonna hit well, that and, point. And that's why I mean, they piss me I off on the conservative help. side because that's all I ever hear about is 
oh well we we they were spending too much money on the safety net motherfucker if the safety net worked we wouldn't be spending shit shut up well yeah or even you know, to me the net is it has been voted on by both sides it is a fact it helps people who hit it man that help. safety net is so damn broken walt you want to know how i how i know it's been broken I've been trying to get help with the safety net for most of my life because I'm not greedy. I'm not rude. I'm not nasty. I just try to survive and try to raise my kids and either me or my kids, one of us have been disabled most of our lives. So it's always been a struggle. So the idea that the safety net is all that in a bag of chips and we can just live off that and live happily ever after is a whole bunch of bullshit. I mean, that's. I have I have a son. I have a son that's thirty four years old, and his entire life, he has needed major help. He's thirty four years old. He's about to get in a new placement, and he is still going to need massive help his entire life. And what they give him is not jack shit. He always gets money from me, his grandma, and other people that care about him because they don't give him enough to live on. They give him enough to survive. That means you get like three huts and a cot to survive. That that's not that's not here. We're gonna make sure you have lots of clean clothes, you have lots of attention, you have stuff to do, you have a productive life, you're happy. None of that shit. That's just making sure you have food in your belly and you have water and you have a roof over your head and medical. That's it. Wait, which one are you talking about? Is that the is that the one that's in prison? The one that's about to get out, yeah. Okay, that's what I thought. And he's been Emily, while he's been in there. Huh? Please, Emily, you want to elaborate, please? That was earlier. That's back when, like, you were talking about. Oh yeah, that's years. earlier. That was way long ago. Mm-hmm. Emily's not even here any longer in in the yeah. live. <clears throat> well, you got to keep I up with the comments. Sorry. I said <laughs> I went in a live <laughs> earlier, and I went to go say hi to Walt. It's a fact. And Walt didn't look at the comments. Yeah, if you want to talk to anybody, they will tell you. I am slow. Oh, slow. I'm. I you can't are help. not. Give it up. It's not that you're slow. You just don't pay attention. That's all it is. You just. Some don't. people just can't do comments and talk at the same time. That doesn't have anything to do with you being slow or anything. Yeah. It's just I'm sorry. An attention <laughs> thing. Give it up, Walt. <laughs> the sad part is, I recently found out my grandson. Um, is dyslexic. Oh, well, you know what? Don't be sad. You found it early. There's nothing wrong with being dyslexic. He just has to take his time. Yeah. Because the holy fast, and now the computers are here, is extremely fast. So for all of us to slow down and focus, I look at the page, I've had to really focus, and because sometimes computer screens jump up and down when mm-hmm. it's gone. It's all gone. Well, honey, I didn't say I it was going to be easy, hon. I just said that he'd be able to do it, and if you start young, he'll adapt to it easy. Well, I've tried well, talking to him about it, because I have lived it. We can do this. He looks at me like I had two heads up. What's wrong with you? No, I can't. Yes, you can. And the biggest part, if he takes over my business, is a, a new, the federal gun, the state gun, the, the DOR, every work. You got to do the paperwork. Most of it's online. He, he really doesn't like it. I don't How like old it. Is but I told him. He's How old is he, Walt? 18. And you're just now finding out that he's dyslexic? Uh-huh. 
And he's graduating high school now. Yes. Well, you did not, yes. you haven't read a book with this boy in 18 years. <laughs> I have many books because I read to him. Does not mean that he was reading and listening to me read. No, wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Okay. This is an example of listening and not hearing. Here. Wait, hearing and not listening. We, as a mother, I really don't know what. Give me a moment. When I used read to my children, my progress, my reading would be progressive as they got older. So when they were one and two, I read all the words for them. By the time they were five and six, I was having them read it with me. By the time they were in second or third grade, they were reading it to me. So in my question is, you've never read a book to this boy, is you've never had an actual interaction with a book with this boy? Rose, if I can explain... I read to him as he got older and we crossed the lines and I'm assuming he's reading with me right so later it gets, and I understand what you're saying if you call me an idiot I guess I am we read many books together obviously you, know, you didn't you know the biggest Obviously, you did not read many I books did. together. You read them to him. Is what my I'm saying. Well, what I'm kind of questioning is, how was this not addressed in school? Because if he was well, reading... Well, I mean, and, and yeah, I mean, so I'm not trying to get on your case, Walt. This is just a, another symptom of the problem. If he's graduating school, how on God's green earth... Is this 17 or 18 or 19 year old graduating high school and he cannot read? It is not he can, possible. He can read. He can then he I could read. We can read, Rose. Don't misunderstand. It is. We can read. I'm not saying the that you can't that. be taught to read, but if you're telling me he was just diagnosed with dyslexia. It takes actual practice to learn how to change how to read when you have dyslexia so that you can actually read just like everybody else. Don't, does it? Well, he's had I that with me for the last it, 10 years. Well, isn't dyslexic people, I thought they read backwards, right? Or no? No. Sometimes what happens, you look at a page and the words are inverted. If you focus, the the words go back to normal, and you can read them. And uh, the focus. So if you take your time, you can read a page. Well, my, one of my daughters, she reads a book in like one week. It would take me a week to read that same didn't book. Didn't you just say, Walt, that he can't do the paperwork for the business, that he's not capable of being... Of being able to read like that? He does not want to. He can do it. Like, focus on him. He can, he can picture... I mean, he goes online all the time. Do you think that love. it's the words yeah. or maybe it's the educator? It's, it's all of us. The fact of the matter is, when, when we I just look at a page... The letters are not clear. And then the focus, when you focus on the, the words take shape, then you can read. You can not focus. Like you could look at a page and see the it amazes me how you do that. And I, I think it's one I can't. I have to 
take a minute to focus on them. I'm not saying it stops you from doing. No, well, you, you made it sound read. like this 18-year-old boy can't read. You know, of course he can read. He's graduating. Of course he can read. Ty, didn't he made it sound like that? Yeah. That's what I was saying. I am so I did not mean to make it sound like that. He can read. That's what the way reading. I... It's not that I can't read. It's not that he can't read. We can. You will, we'll look at a page. We got to focus for a minute. We can't see that page for a minute. It's just it's fuzzy. You take a minute. You focus. Focus. Now I can see it. When the letters stop moving around, then they say, I know it doesn't make much sense to you, but deal with it. I've talked to people with dyslexia before. They've just never let me come to the conclusion that they couldn't read at 18 years old. Rosa said we can't. It's not we read. It's just, it takes longer. I was talking to somebody a while ago, back in, when I was in elementary thing, they rolled out in our wheels, and it had colors. They were color-coded. And you got to pick a color, and you read. I don't know how many people. Rose, you probably had them. You're a babe. You, you you pick this color, and you read what what's on this page to do a little summary about it, and then do the next one, next one. Well, and then, and what I had, is it? I loved it. Yeah, I thought it was wonderful. Remember when they rolled it out reading class, and it had the color. And a, a, oh, you test to see if you're colorblind in school. And after after so many colors, they would say, you're smart, you're advanced, or you have to go to a different class. I, so, I, I don't even know. If they <laughs> give, I don't remember if they give you a test for that because I was colorblind, but I don't know. Yeah, but back in the day, Ty, it was a lot more generic than it is now. Like, back in the day, it was like you would take like a 50 question quiz and if you couldn't answer certain questions you got to sit at the back of the short bus it was that easy mm. it wasn't like it is now <laughs> i don't even know where like they would tell you, they would tell you it's okay sit down eat your crayons just don't lick the <laughs> yeah i don't know like like, I mean, it's just, it, it's hard for people to understand the way it was back in the day because, like, there wasn't even a question of vaccinations. You didn't even go to the doctor. They brought that shit to school. You went to school, you lined up at school, you got your vaccine, and then you went back to class. And we was all good and indoctrinated Rose. and fine with that shit. Rose, you must remember... What they did, so the girls had to go to one room where the doctor came in to check your spine. The boys yeah, were, and you had to bend down so the, the and touch your toes, and your shirt had to lift up so the doctor could put his hand along and feel your spine. Yeah, what it was, it was that easy? Well, for us boys, it was a bit different. We had... We had to drop our drawers so the doctor could grab us and squeeze and say, turn your head and cough. Yeah, we didn't do that shit. So, yeah, back in the day, things were a bit different than today. Today, it's a little bit more personal. Back then, it was a similar line. 
read, don't read. What was that? whatever it was for you, you the girl's back was turned. The guy ruptures or whatever it was, whatever the case was, was assembled. The old days. Yeah, they got it wrong in the good old days too. Don't forget. Wait, what era? Oh were hell you... yeah! Well, what era were you born in? Like, were you born in the sixties? I was born. I was. I was born in nineteen fifty-six. Okay. I'm He's three years, years old. um, older than my husband. I didn't know your husband was that old. I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> Tell me sorry that my husband's old. <laughs> oh, my God. Like, it's something to me apologizing for and shit. I mean, you're... I have Waltz. to apologize to my wife. So... What's that, Ty? Ty, Ty what did you turn off your mic? He turned off his mic. He just muted himself. He's probably doing something. No, I'm here. I wanted to just see how old you were. <laughs> I did the math. So, no, I was just curious. Oh. No, because I knew, no, I, I knew he was, I knew Walt was probably born in like the 50s or 60s because when he said like certain things, I could tell because mm -hmm. like when he said he liked Elizabeth Montgomery, I'm like, that would have been because I watched Bewitched, so that would have been in the 60s. Mm -hmm. I liked it too. In fact, on my, uh, on my phone, it has Hi. Bewitched as a tone. Yeah, I know. I I heard Ty. that the other day. What? Ty, you have a very good memory. When did I say I liked him? I think when we were talking about like celebrities, you said you liked Elizabeth Montgomery. Which I do. But that had to be a long time memory, don't you? <laughs> Me? I have... He's like, which I do. But you didn't get to remember that. Walt, I have <laughs> Walt, I have long term memory. Like I remember things like a lot. That's why I was always good in school because I can memorize things very. Quickly. I know I have a photographic memory. They used to try to make it an <laughs> identic memory in school. I'm like, you look. My, my name ain't Sheldon, man. I can't remember that shit. Like that. me and Rose have OCD, like obsessive thing. So like people like that, they have good memories. <laughs> Well, and it was here's the I thing though. When you, you get older, have... OCD is a negative thing because oh, when you get older, you constantly obsess about shit, and you're like shit that other people don't worry about. You can't stop thinking about. That's true. I'm a bad person of um, always like worrying about like what happened in the past and being able to change the past, but you can't. That's one thing that I... And I'm always that. worried about the suffering of others. That, That's another one of mine, because I'm a big that empath. OCD, that OCD thing, that OCD an overwhelming thing. It brings me to the memory of be, me being... A, I had a salesman. He was an awesome to me. He would come to my warehouse. He would actually do inventory for me. Whatever I was low on, obviously he's making money doing that. So he would stock my warehouse for him. So his hot water tank as his house went out. So he said, he said, please, can you help me? I said, absolutely. But he said, well, it's in the attic. Nobody else wants to carry at a hot water tank. Oh, yeah, it's a big one. I said, I'll do it for you. So I bring this hot water tank to his attic. And I cut out the old one. I plug it in new one. So now I am sweating. It's hot in the attic. Summertime. I'm sweating. I'm dishing the tank. He's got OCD. He's got a paper towel. He's wiping the tank. He can't mm -hmm. stand my finger. 
You know, oh, the yeah, asshole I am. Hurt. Help me, so. <laughs> um, as soon as he gets done wiping and cleaning it, I'm checking the fittings to make sure nothing's going to leak. I got to put my hands <laughs> on the prints. You know Walt's an asshole. He has to go over there and touch everything after he wiped it off. <laughs> now, this is a bright white tank in a dark attic. And he's got a paper towel. And he he had to go get more paper towels. He could not stand my fingers. Oh, Walt, well, don't pick on to... people. And after, now, it caused me to help this boy. And after I felt, I just bust him up. And here I am being a jerk. And I know he had to be thinking. Well, you know he can't guy. help it. Cost me about a thousand. Oh, well, I didn't expect you to do all that. You know. just, uh... yeah, that's what he said. But I know in the <laughs> back of his mind, he said, he, he helped me out, but what a jerk he is. <laughs> Fingerprints everywhere. Walt lives in and a world like I'm a jerk, you're a jerk, we're all a jerk. <laughs> now we're both sweating hot. So he gets me a glass of water, which I'm very appreciative of thirsty. Cause hey, it's been Abel, hot. how you doing, honey? <laughs> so I put my finger with the glass and then I put my hands on his countertop. And I got fingerprints. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> I continue to be. I think about him quite often. Uh, I closed the warehouse nine, and I really miss seeing him come around. I know he misses it because on me. Uh -oh. Walt cracks me up. I can be a crazy guy. Well, sometimes. Most of the time. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to be a nice guy. That I, I come back again and do it some more. <laughs> you know how expensive it got to buy bird feed? It's like the world said, now we're going to let these bitching birds starve. Why are you worried about birds? What do you... Why is that what you come out with? Like, why am I worried about birds? Because I like to feed the birds. Why do you care? Because they feed themselves. Well, maybe because I like to put bird seed out so I can enjoy watching them eat it. Okay. If you enjoy complain about the cost of their feed. My neighbors and one of my neighbors she put she's got a whole bunch of the hummingbird feeders which I get to yeah. sit there and watch her birds come and feed. Also she brings the squirrels. I like and we I have like our birds. I like it. Well the squirrels come and they grow in big numbers, and there's the uh, owl every couple of months. When the owls come in, the squirrels dissipate. Of course. Yes, they are. <laughs> owls creepy. eat some squirrels up. Owls will eat some squirrels there's, up. There's two different types. One of them is a squirrel. Um, Squirrel eat them. She has this hooch, which and then the when she the the uh, the guy who does the um you call him the wrapped guy. He explained to me they have a fifty one one hour will go fifty miles. When the other um, that one has a fifty mile maybe more. That's a screech owl. Will give you goosebumps when that one screeches. My good gift. Oh yeah, it's you got a screech owl out there. That'll drive. That'll make your hair stand up on the back of your head, man. Woo. 
This is this is out. like at midnight. Ooh. I don't mind now. one. This Do you live out there? Do you live in the Appalachian? Do. Well, actually, yeah. the foothills. Yeah. The foothills. I live up. In the I live up here in the Laurel Highlands in the Appalachians. So you're probably closer to the mountains than I am. Yeah, my elevation here is about um, 1,800. Yeah, I'm only about 900. Yeah, so it's a little taller here, but um, if people actually realize, see, you're all the way down there in North Carolina. I'm all the way over here in southwest Pennsylvania, and we're part of the same mountain chain. Exactly. If People I go just realize. a little bit to the west, I mean, I go up Black Mountain, I'll be at your elevation, and if I could drive straight up that ridge right to you. Yeah. And, of course, it sounds easier than it is because you'd be doing this all the way there. Oh, heck yeah. Big time. We had this standing yeah. joke a while back. The South Carolina governor on, on the Appalachian Trail. I sure you remember that. He was a Republican. And everybody yeah, had you know, what? You, know, you know why they keep that area Republican? Because if Democrats ever came in there and took over, we would start actually giving some freaking land back. So they're gonna sit there and harp on that shit until the cows come home. All those, all those I'm Native gonna, Americans, all, native. all the natives, all the indigenous that came from North Carolina, they should have their sovereignty back. Now that doesn't mean that you have to give up your house and all that. Sovereignty just means that they have a say so over what goes on on their land. I'm not gonna go anywhere near that road. In far western. North Carolina, there's a little town, Ricky County, called Murphy. The story of what it did to the Cherokee Nation is horrible. Yeah. Uh, there's no way I could repay the people. The thing, is, the thing is, is that no way. Our, the way we repay the generations that have suffered is to make sure people know the truth. That's the way I feel. To, for me, to I make sure that all of the all of the different um, native and indigenous tribes that have suffered over the years, how I pay them back is I make sure that we actually make sure the truth is told in our books, in our history, that we actually make sure that we tell the truth about all the atrocities and all the horrible shit that we did back then. And, and that we, we make sure we have, we have to make sure that we recognize that. We were a bunch of we were home, horrible. Um, and we still home, are horrible um, in a lot of in ways. Massachusetts, the um ones who had owned that previously. And the school that I went to was named after King Philip, who was the, the one sort of tribe. A little bit to the west of us was the Mohawk. Yes, you can imagine what happened to all of them. It's an embarrassment for us. We always acknowledge them for what they contributed, what they did. The area in the town was the, we call it Watery Hill. It's where Rom well, sort of had the last stand. Yeah, this memorial is a memorial to our embarrassment is what it is. The thing is, is that they, they were successful because there's so much of our history that even I don't know. And I'm 54. I'm like, how y'all be hiding shit? That pisses me off. They did not. They just omitted. 
They just didn't bother talking about it. Tell me how that's different. Tell me how that's different, man. It's just as rude, just as ridiculous. When I was growing up, it was clear to me. Every um, the Woodstock School, the Woodstock Trading Post. That's where originally the Native Americans and um, did business. They actually traded. They actually did business, and we convinced them we're going to be your friend until we destroy. That's why it's so yes. damn bad. Because because we actually came saying that we were friends, and then we turned around and we were enemies. And to this day, everybody there celebrates. There's landmarks everywhere. Everybody. It's not only about Independence Day. It's also about Mohawk Day. It's also about... There's areas all over town labeled for them. We are proud of their heritage. We are embarrassed by what it's we did. Still not to enough, them though. We still took proud. everything from them, and we still and we still reneged on our contracts. We still did not. That's we fact. still did not follow up on our promises until we actually until we actually come out and follow up and do what we're supposed to do. It's not right. You froze up there for a little bit. I missed some of that. I said we got to do what's right. That is true. We need to do what's right. And some of them are trying to do just that. By celebrating the um, great... I don't know what that means and where you live, but the Grandfather's Day is very, very, very important. Celebrating one side of the grandfather. Because they were the ones that guided the village on the young people. They were the ones who who gave. And yes, we took it from them. Oh, we look at the boo boo baby came in here to try boo boo and mix up medical and 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 uh, legal definitions. Oh, isn't that cute? What new sad face? Kind of refreshing to deal with old ass arguments like that, right? What? What? Where's this coming from? Talking huh? about any of this stuff? What are they saying? No, oh, the comments. That's what I mean. Where are these comments coming from? We weren't talking about. Because they don't, they're not happy with people actually having conversation. They have to try to come in and try to make her, people feel hurt. We want to, we want to make people cry. We want to make people feel hurt because we're not happy with anything except our death. Stop killing innocent babies. Stop eating your own. Stop eating your own lunchbox. What are you doing? Stop letting all your priests touch all your little children there. Aunt Mamie, go away. Should I get a little bit more disrespectful? Come in here and say something stupid? Come in and say something else stupid. Come on. I'm not going to treat people nice anymore when they come in here and say stupid shit. Oh, there we go. With the, You know what? I forgot to bring my bingo card. Anyway, there is strike two on the bingo card. Two more and we got it. The crowd goes wild. <sighs> Drake two on the bingo card. Abortion is not birth control. 
News at 11. Stop watching fake news and listening to old Uncle Jed, who doesn't have any idea of what reproductive health care is. Ding, 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 ding. Talking about inadvertent mistakes. Rose, you want to hear a really good one? Oh, there they go again. No? They're trying to form out the same lie twice. Yes, I want to hear one, hon. I just I'm messing with the troll here. We have we have to play. You know, I like I'm, I'm I come I'm from the house of petty. Oh, go ahead. Well, in an earlier live, I was having a discussion with some people, and they were asking me about um, a boy. And I said, Well, number one, the government has no right to tell to do. In any part of your life, there's a whole list of government telling you what to do, and abortion is one of them. So they said, "Well, what about?" So you know they do all all the what about, and so in the they go, well, of course, if you go to Satan, you you have the right. government can't tell you what to do, and they say, "Well, what?" I said, "Well." If if you go essayed by a rapist, you're gonna raise a rapist. The lady went off on me. You're telling me I gave birth to my son who's gonna be a racist and nuts on me. <laughs> it was not my intent to do that or say that. Well she meant what my mistake was assuming is mentally unstable to actually hurt a woman because in my mind I can't see anything like that so for somebody stop killing innocent a man babies. to hurt a woman stop killing innocent babies well Karen stop taking them out of your fridge and cooking them in dumbass it's the only one eating taking uh, hurting innocent babies is you dumbass thinking about t saying stupid shit like that? Because that's what I'm talking about right there. The stupid shit like that coming out your mouth. We got the bit bit. We got we got somebody in the comments tied that don't know what a bit bit is. They don't know what. They don't know what a baby is, Ty. They don't know. <laughs> hey, Ty. Hey, I had to Buddy. go. To, I had to go pee. I had to go to the bathroom. So I'm back. Yeah, they don't know. They said we kill in the babies, and evidently they don't know what a baby is. <laughs> it's just the babies. Who is this person? I feel like I've seen them in another live before. <laughs> what is this? A consent order for your redress payment? Please contact. What? Y'all sent me $100? Shit. For what? For what? You already reimbursed me, bitches. Okay. I guess I'm not going to look a gift horse in the mouth, dummies. Okay. You want to send me $100? I'll take it. All things considered. Isn't birth control? Oh, somebody needs to cob brush the cobwebs out of the JJ and go get a VKK and get some EduKK. Oh my God! When I say that, I get in trouble. <laughs> Since they're insulting me, I guess I need to say something back, right? 
You can. <laughs> oh, anyway. Yeah, I mean, as long as you're going to act like a little baby, that's what you get. Energy matched. Energy match. I'm sitting here going through like a week's worth of mail. Okay. That was someone oh. where I heard they were talking about God has put women in charge of each month. Because he has confidence in some women. As far as guys go, he gives guys 180 million little seats every every time. So that's how much confidence God has in men. <laughs> women can do one time 80 million, and the guy can't pull it off. Sometimes he just can't do it. The um, guys are not that competent. <laughs> God doesn't have very much confidence in men. <laughs> Women, you get. Not, we know you can do it. We'll give you one shot a month. Men, you can't do shit. We're going to give you 180 million shots every single time. <laughs> not the first time I've heard that discussion either. Can't say I disagree. Well, because guys are pretty incompetent anyway. And we know. <laughs> that that I get would not surprise me. About. DeSantis is like pure evil. So it wouldn't surprise me that he did something like that, to be honest. My brother and I were. And he said, well, what's going on with you? And I said, well, to be truthful. My wife found out after 37 years of marriage, she married, she's pissed off. And he laughed. He said, I understand. Four years just found out that same thing. And boy, is she pissed. About what? Same boat. Sooner or later, we're going to find out this. And it pisses them off. And they, they get more upset with the society to do this. Yes, yeah, we did yeah. talk you into it. We, we tried we to... We bought your uh... roses. <laughs> yeah. Did you have a talk to your wife, well, your wife well, about all that? Oh, Absolutely. What'd she say? I bought you roses. I bought you chocolate.